Once again, everyone, Joe Archino here, and a big thank you to American Legion Post 135 for generously welcoming us here to do the show today. I am always happy when I get to see my friend Gail Goodson. Gail, you're a, you're a pro. We're bringing in the Marines today. Yes. You've been on the show many times, and uh, I'm always glad to see you. So thank you for being down, coming down today. Well, Joe, thanks for having me once again. And uh, like you say, it's always a pleasure to be here. It really is funny, you know. We've been we were talking off, off the air, and of course with Andre, who's going to be coming on today. Who you you welcome to bring on the show. And, you know, it's it's one of the your, the favorite things you get to do is you get to meet people, and you really build a little family with all the people you bring on the air. And you've gotten us in through Hudson Valley Honor Flight, the Hudson Valley Honor Luncheon. So you've really helped us meet even more people, and that's kind of where I want to start is. You know, we were on the ground. We got to cover the Hudson Valley Honor Flight in May, and my dad came down for it too to see. And it it really was, you know, you'd talked to us about it, you'd kind of taken us through, but to actually see it with your own eyes, it's one of those things you don't forget. It's an unforgettable experience to see the vets coming in on the buses, to see the the motorcycle riders escorting them in, to see them come in, and just the outpouring of support. It was something I'll never forget. My, it's something my dad told me too. You know, Armando Chicolella, who's a Pearl Harbor survivor, wasn't the guest of honor there. The outpouring of respect that he got and everything. It's one of the things that truly makes you understand why we're so lucky to live in the country that we do when you have a room full of people like that, Gail. Um, but but just for you, I mean, were, were you there? I didn't, we didn't get the chance to catch up with you. Were you there that day? Um, in May, I was not there. Okay. Um, but there was an honor flight that left today. Oh, out of really? Stewart. Yes, yes. This morning, um, the flight left out. Um, we had 82 vets on the flight this morning. Um, eight were World War II veterans. God bless them. One World War II and Korea veteran, 37 Korean era veterans, 19 post Korean veterans, one Korean and Vietnam era veteran. And for the first time, 16 Vietnam era veterans. That's, so, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, the, um, the weight of the flight has changed from World War II veterans that now we're, um, we're seeing more and more um, Vietnam veterans you coming know, on. It's funny because so many of our followers uh, have, are, have been Vietnam veterans. And that's one question I got asked so much is when people mm -hmm. saw we were doing the honor flight, you know, when are the Vietnam vets going to... You know, so that's uh, if any one of them well, are listening right now, that's yes. going to make them very happy to hear. Yes, we are now accepting applications for Vietnam veterans. There is a wait list, but uh, you can see that we're almost, you know, we're usually around 80 vets per flight. So we have another flight coming up. Mission 25 will be May 2nd. Okay. Um, out of Stewart Airport. And Mission 26 is May 30th out of White Plains Airport. So um, get your applications in. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you, you know, like I said, we do have a waiting list, but that waiting list grows smaller and smaller. So it's time to get those applications in. It's just, you know, I, I just thinking about right now, because when you were t taking us through who was on the flight today, when they were calling the different eras of service to stand up, mm -hmm. it's just when you looked around that room and you saw the different eras of, of service members represented, it, it just, it, it, you can't make, if you, you get so fired up to see these guys and you could see how excited they are to be a part of this. Oh yeah. And it's, I'll never forget at the Hudson Valley uh, luncheon last November, right. I was talking to one veteran and you know, he was telling me, you know, how he'd never been down to see his World War II memorial and how there was a little girl who went up to him and thanked him for his service. and. He just, he said how much that really meant, you know, because he, he'd he never really had in a moment like that where someone so young and, and really a little bit far away from that generation really understood and really respect him for what he did. And, you know, for work like that is just, what you do is amazing. It really well, is. It's it, like you touched on, you know, as soon as you experience Honor Flight one time, that right after that first time you experience it, it's kind of like you can't not want to experience yeah. it again. And that's why, you know, my, my hat is off to the volunteers in Honor Flight because they just don't go away. No. They stick around and um, they do one flight, then they do another flight. And uh, maybe um, they don't go on a flight, but they're still 
there at the airport cheering the, uh, the mission on. They'll be there tonight welcoming them home. And we really have a great pool of volunteers. And that's one thing I wanted to ask you about too, is you know, we see it getting put on, but behind the scenes, I'm sure there's such a tremendous amount of work that goes into planning each and every one of these. Well, you know, like I said, it's mission 24 today and every single mission gets easier with the planning because of course it's, you know, you're adding to it. And, but there's always things that come up that need special attention. There's always a medical issue with one of the vets. There's always um, a transportation issue with one of the vets. We have volunteers that do nothing but drive for us from Ulster County, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. They literally get up at you know 3.30 in the morning and pick a vet up and drive them into the airport. And then when the plane leaves, they go home. And then they come back again at night to pick up this vet and bring them home. That's literally all they do for us. But it's so important just to do that driving because these vets would never get to the flight without no, that. No, and it's, it's a long day, it really is. And yes. no, I, I shouldn't assume that everyone is listening. Obviously we pick up new listeners, so maybe for people who, who haven't heard of Hudson Alley uh, on our flight, maybe you could take us through you know, what, what, it invo what the day involves when you do have one of these flights. Okay, well, um, on our flight begins at um, oh, dark 30. Um, it's it's um, a flight to Washington, D.C for any veteran that, uh, to see their war memorial. It started off with just World War II veterans, but as you know, we're losing them daily, and the amount that we have to take to Washington gets smaller and smaller. Um, I can tell you that Hudson Valley Honor Flight has taken almost 2,000 veterans to Washington. It's amazing. And um, because of that, there's 2,000 less World War II vets to go down. So we're very proud of the fact that we've gotten them down there. But um, the day starts out with a, um, a send-off at the, the airport, and then the vet is uh, flown to Washington, D.C., to Reagan International Airport, taken to see the World War II Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, and the Korean Memorial. And then, if they're lucky, and I say this uh, um, from my heart, if they're lucky, they get to stop at the, uh, if weather is permitting, they get to stop at the uh, Marine Corps War Memorial. So that's always a special treat for me, especially. Um, and uh, sometimes we're greeted by, uh, one time the silent drill team was there wow. performing. So it, it's, it's a, a great day. They have lunch. They uh, continue on to the Air Force Memorial. And then um, they spend some time at Arlington Cemetery. They uh, may lay a wreath. Um, they definitely see the changing of the guard. And then uh, it's back to a uh, catered dinner. Uh, we have a catered dinner at a hotel so they can put their feet up a little bit and relax because like you say, it is it's a, a long, long day. day. <laughs> yes. And then uh, it's back on the flight and they're home by about 8, 8.30 at night. Uh, so it's, um, it is a long day, but it's so full of fun and so full of emotion. Yeah. And um, once again, I have to say it, once you do it, you kind of keep coming back yes. for more. Um, no one has ever volunteered for Honor Flight and said, well, I'm not doing that yeah. again. Okay, people like, they want to keep doing it. They want to, no matter what they do. You know, we have we have groups of women in Port Jervis, um, New York, that that make quilts, lap quilts for all the vets, and they're given out at the end of the flight. Like, this is one section of of honor flight. This is one thing that people do to volunteer for honor flight. So um, all I can say is that. If you're not an honor plate volunteer, you're missing out. Yeah. Okay. And you you broke it all down so well. So anyone who hasn't been there, I think, has a better idea. Sure. And certainly, you know, to go down and experience it, it like I was telling you from my dad who came down, and he always helps out with the show too, but he was just in awe, like I think all of us were, of just being being a small part of this. You know, we're, we were just there to interview some people and do some stuff, but to watch the volunteers and everything else was just in absolutely incredible. And you know, one of the things that we, we brought up is, 
you know, the fact that so many hadn't been down to see their memorials, I think that was one of the motivations behind the the concept of the yes. honor flight yes. was these people who served our country. I mean, you got to, they, they deserve to see the memorials that, that they're a part of those conflicts. And so part of that is getting them down there, making that happen. And it makes your heart very happy yes. to see that actually be possible. Yes. But you did touch on kind of the being a part of the Marine Memorial. We obviously have brought in the Marines yes. today. We have you and Andrea here. You know, it, it's, it always is something that's so cool. You know, obviously we've had some Marines on the show, but female Marines is not something you always get to do. Yes, we're few and far between. But yes. it's, it's so cool to, like, I mean, I, I always remember the stories that you've told us about and kind of the way you went in. Because again, let's face it, you know, it is a very male heavy a dominated thing but yes. you know blazing a trail for for a lot of female marines who are there today and who are thriving and who are doing incredibly well i mean it's 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 so cool that you're able to come down and share your stories and your experiences about it well you know when when i enlisted um the ratio was uh we were at six percent female and now i believe it's nine percent so um, we are moving, moving up, up, moving up, yes. But we're still, uh, you know, a, a very small percentage percentage um, of the ranks. So um, a lot of times, you know, people look at me, they say, Marine, <laughs> yes, you know. Or um, I have a uh, Marine veteran license plate and people like to ask me when my husband served. You know, so um, it's a g big joke in our family, you know, <laughs> when did your husband serve? So, uh, uh, but it, it's, um, it, it's a, a great sense of pride for me that I served in the Marine Corps and um, I earned an Eagle Globe and Anchor. So, see, I get a little touchy w when I say that, but um, not too many people can say that. No. And not too many women can say that. So it's something I'm very proud of. Well, you know, I, I've been so lucky to get to know you and have, I, I always really considered such an honor to have you on the show because again, I, I sense, I see how much it means to you and to me to be able to see that and to relay that to other people, you know, it's, it's something other people need to know and to hear that because this is what it's all about. It's all about hearing your story, your experiences, showing our gratitude to you for what you've done and given to our country. And it's something I know everyone who's listening from afar and wide, they all send it to you. They not, might not be able to say it like I can right, right to you, but I know everyone feels the same way that I do. And it's, it's, it's an incredible sense of pride for us as much as it is for you, I'm sure. Well, thank you very much, Joe. It's always, you know, like I said, it's always good to be here. It's always good that, um, you know, you asked me to come in and to talk about the things that I'm involved with. Um, because it's important that other people know about yes. them. And it's important that people know that um, it, it, it's a good thing when another, when a veteran does something for another veteran's organization, you know. Um, yes, we may belong to the American Legion. We may belong to the Marine Corps League. We may belong to the Women Marines Association. But there's other veterans organizations out there that need our help and need veterans' help. So... Um, I'm always happy to uh, to give my time. It's uh, it's a, a new way of volunteering for me. So well, you've set me up perfectly for our next interview and our next guest, certainly with that statement right there. But it is so true, and you know, that's one of the well, the great senses of pride too with this program is the veterans we've been able to help connect with each other. You know, there's so, and it's one thing that you really see why the veteran community is so special. Is there, everyone is always trying to help out one another. Everyone is always trying to use their different platforms or their different tools to help out their fellow vets. Doesn't matter what branch you've served in, where you are now in life, everyone is just there for each other and that's what makes it so very special. But Gail, uh, you keep up the incredible work. We love being able to talk to you and follow what you do. We have the utmost respect for you and all the work and ev the work everyone at Hudson Valley Honor Flight does. Yes. I know it's always a little bit of a drive to get down here for you, so but we're always thrilled to have you. So thank you so much for coming on again. Well, thank you for having me.